cool, Joe? It's. It is. Push with you. Play one match. Push you. Play one. First frame. Joe Perry to me. One place in the semi-finals of this group already filled, three more to go. And everyone is still in contention for them. Judd Trump, very much the man of yesterday, won all four matches he played for the loss of only two frames. So he's definitely through to the last four, whatever happens in his two remaining matches. And it really couldn't be much tighter behind him. Ben Wollaston and Mark Williams. Wow. Have both got two wins. Joe Perry. But they have played four matches. While well, the other four players, Martin Gould, Joe Perry, Ricky Walden, and Dave Gilbert, all have one win, but they've all only played three. And those four players all in action in this session. It's Gould against Gilbert on the other table. Here, it's Ricky Walden and Joe Perry. Joe Perry, the inaugural winner of the Championship League, 10 years ago now. Yesterday was a very unusual day in the Championship League. Only one of the 12 matches went the full five frames. And that was the match which provided Walden with his only win of the day. 
as he saw off Ben Wollaston by three frames to two in a very high quality encounter. He'd had two three one defeats before that against Martin Gould and Mark Williams. So taking that deciding frame against Wollaston really kept him in the mix. Well, it doesn't look like he's finished on anything. Even with so many reds out in the open. Ricky Walden, six. practice tables here at the Championship League but the players do have the option to come in and have a knock on the actual match table itself before play starts and Walden did come in and have a little bit of a practice I don't think Joe Perry did Fair to describe this as a very scrappy start to the opening frame.
one. Six. It's a half decent chance this, but things not ideally situated. I think if he does get the black back in its spot, it might go to the right corner. Well, the four open reds will be enough if he takes sufficiently high value colours with them. 35. And I think uh, the four reds just above the black, the one at the top of that little cluster, seems to go to the left corner. Just when he was a couple of balls away from clinching the frame. Surprising miss on the black. And perhaps a little fortunate not to have left anything. Thanks. 
would only have needed one more red and black after that. Martin Gould has won the first frame against David Gilbert over on the other table. Both of those players like these two on one win out of three so far. Always fairly limited control positionally when you're playing a ball from that sort of distance and the object ball is in the jaws, but he's played it well. Nine. Perry, 20. It's a bad miss from Perry, but it's not a certainty Walden is going to take the frame as a result because he'll still need the last red. One. And that shot certainly hasn't worked out. Two slices of luck there. Just managed to avoid the kiss on the blue. Had he done so, would have left a relatively straightforward red in all probability. And then did get the kiss on the green, well, which <laughs> looked fortunate. But Walden has picked out a pot. should now win the first frame. Two snookers need it. I think Perry certainly seemed to think he had actually snookered Walden behind the green. Seven. Nine. Ricky Walden Nine. at a break of 47. He gave Joe Perry a couple of chances to get back into it, but he didn't take them. And Ricky Walden leads Joe Perry by one frame to nil. And this is the scene on the other table. I told you Martin Gould had won the first against David Gilbert. And he's a good early chance now in the second. Former winner of this title. He's also been a runner-up as well. And 
a break of 101 in the first frame of this match. Gould got off to a winning start yesterday against Ricky Walden. Second but then had back to back defeats. Ricky Walden's a break. Against Judd Trump and Mark Williams. Who are actually the only two players in the group ranked above him. So we'll keep you posted on that. Can only assume that Walden thought that red was too far past the middle to be cut in. Surely wouldn't have played the shot that way if he'd uh, thought the pot was on. Joe Perry, 43 years of age now. 11. He's been a professional snooker player for well over half his life. More than a quarter of a century on the circuit. He had a very long wait for his first ranking title. Finally came three years ago out in Thailand. Might well have won the Masters this time last year. It was just overtaken in the closing stretch by Ronnie O'Sullivan in the final.
26. Joe Perry, 26. Well, that's a really bad miss. You never expect to see that. And the red that he's missed has run over the bulk pocket. I do see this sometimes, the first match of the day in the Championship League, player coming in cold, and just uh, struggles for sharpness early on, perhaps the case with Perry. Six. He missed that by some distance, and I think he's left it. to have fallen pretty nicely. Four. Could perhaps have done with getting into the reds a bit more, but the main thing is that he's landed on one. Five. And looks like he's going to go into them again, this time off the cushion. Twenty two. Twenty three. So fifty in front. Another red and black. I believe I'm just needing one more red after that. Thirty-one.
think does the job just as well though so this red is to leave Warden needing two snookers So as Perry levels the match here, Martin Gould zipping along on the other table. Back-to-back -back centuries to start the day against David Gilbert. So 2-0 up there. Joe Perry got in first, made 26, missed a red to the middle, surprisingly, but Walden didn't make the most of his reprieve, and Perry was straight back in to make that 60 and level the match at one all. in such a tight group every match you win really makes a huge difference to your prospects of getting through and this may well turn out to be one of those rare occasions where the group is so tight that you see somebody getting through to the semi-finals with only two wins from the six matches has happened a few times Perry to break. It's quite similar stories to the first two frames. One player got in, made a bit of a break, couldn't quite see it through, but the other player failed to take advantage of his reprieve. So we've arrived at one all. They've not had many high profile meetings over the years. Perhaps the most significant match they ever played against each other was the quarter finals of the Indian Open in 2015. Walden won that one. They've only met twice since then. They were both two years ago now, and both in this competition. One win each. So not that much previous history to go on when you consider how long they've both been around. you see a player up as quickly as that he knows he's made a mess of us and this is a decent early chance for Walden
Bye. It's been quite a poor couple of years for Walden by his standards. And he didn't start this season particularly well. Got to the last 16 in India. But other than that, it was mostly fairly early exits. Okay. Just in the last couple of months, signs that he's turning a corner. In the last three ranking events, he's been in at least the last 16 of all three. And in the Scottish Open, he went on to the quarterfinals. Was beaten by Chow Yupeng. He did then follow that by coming through two qualifiers to earn a place in next week's German Masters in Berlin. He'll play Jack Lazowski in the last 32 there, this day next week. Not straightforward this black, but if he pots it and gets it back in its spot and lands on a red, then this suddenly becomes a really good chance. Sixteen. Well, that's what he's done. Well, that's just extraordinary, and you can see how he reacted there. A gesture of disbelief, almost. And having done the initial hard work, 
Remarkable that he should break down on a shot like that. This is a very good chance for Perry. awkward reds near the left hand side cushion and the one on the cushion isn't that far from the pocket so it's a very real chance No doubt about it, neither of them exactly firing on all cylinders this morning. I think that look says it all.
Perry looking quite frustrated. Just can't find his game yet this morning. If he loses this match, he'll have only one win out of four, so he needs to turn things around soon. Eight. And again, this could be another frame where the player who got in first and didn't make the most of it Nine. ends up getting a let off. Perry certainly had a chance to turn this frame around, but made only 14 from it. Forty three in front. So even a red and black would make it fifty one, which would mean he'd still need one more red. Twenty-five. The blue means just the same though, and he's landed on a simple pot to Borg pocket. Thirty. So this will leave Perry needing two snookers. Sometimes when you miss a black off the spot, as Walton did earlier from close quarters, it can get in your head, but it's less likely to do so if you end up winning the frame anyway. 51. Ricky Walden got in first, made 33, missed a black off the spot, but Perry didn't take advantage of the let off, only scored 14 from the chance he got, and with that break of 71, Walden takes the frame, and he's one away from victory now, he leads Perry by two frames to one. And it's uh, basically all over on the other table. Martin Gould started off with back-to-back -back centuries against Dave Gilbert. He's definitely going to win this third frame now. Gilbert has been a virtual spectator for most of this contest. So this is only the second match in this group that's finished 3-0, and Gilbert has been on the receiving end of both. And that isn't going to do him any favours if it comes back to a frames count-back later in the day. 
Only one win out of four for him, but it's two wins from four for Gould. And he's still got two matches to go. A thoroughly one-sided contest. Martin Gould emerges as the winner. Player with a really good record in the Championship League. And if he can keep playing the way he did in this match, he could make that record even better. So Martin Gould beats Dave Gilbert by three frames to nil. Gilbert will be back on the same table in just a few minutes to play Mark Williams. Back here, we're just waiting for Ricky Walden to return to the arena. Just a reminder, it's the usual format. The top four in the group at the end of the round robin section will go through to the group semi-finals. Semis and group final both played this evening. And then the winner of the group goes through to the winner's group in March. The beaten finalist, the beaten semi-finalist, the player who finishes fifth. And then three new players coming in. They'll all start again tomorrow in Group 6. And then there'll be one more group next month. And that will be immediately followed by the winner's group to determine the overall winner of the Championship League in its 11th season. The three players incidentally coming in for Group 6 tomorrow. Graham Dott, the 2006 World Champion. Michael Weiss, a former ranking event winner. And Lee Hang from China who's having his best season to date. Frame four. They'll all be here tomorrow. To today, Ricky Walden leads Joe Perry 2-1 and he's getting us underway in frame four. Hasn't looked particularly confident in this match so far, Eight. Perry. We've seen him doing a lot of shaking his head and shrugging his shoulders. Nine. Let's see what he can do with this opportunity. He needs to do something with it, really. He's not performed in this match. Did have that break of 60, but other than that, it's been 60. a bit all over the place. And so was that shot. He's still on this black, but much more difficult a shot than it really should have been.
Yeah, he just got himself tied up in knots, made that much more difficult for himself than it needed to be, and sometimes when you get out of position, you just can't find your way back into it. It's all a bit of a struggle for Perry at the moment. It's not exactly coming that easily to Ricky Walden either, which is why this match is still very much in the balance. Whatever about the outcome of this match, I think they're both going to have to raise their standard quite a bit if they're to be in serious contention in this group. from that good opening red Walden has given himself a bit of a chance here and if he can just manage the next couple of shots right could find himself in prime scoring position and in with a chance to finish it off here don't think he's on the black. Well, definitely not on it. You can see from there. And if 
he just got that shot right and managed to land on the black, given where the reds are. He would have been starting to see that as a match clinching chance. Ricky Walden, 12. Well, he's got to get this right, hasn't he, Perry? Any chance that he would hand to Walden could potentially be a match-winning chance. that red to the right corner doesn't go. You have to think, given the way Perry played the shot, that it doesn't. Looks from there as though it does, but again, if that red was on, I'm sure Walden would have got down and played it by now. Attempted the cut, but taking the cue ball back to Bork and playing the red at that pace wasn't much danger of leaving anything.
one. Again, everything is just hard work to him at the moment. Definitely wanted to come a good bit further with the cue ball on this red. Did well to find the gap between pink and black there. But needs another good shot now. No great difficulty potting the blue. But needs to be careful positionally. Well, he's played that pretty well. Nine. bit of work to do here. All oh, the reds pretty awkward. And the lead only 41 with still 59 left. 15. He's played that one nicely. pot this black and just drop on to the red on the cushion and that will be frame ball well, has he come far enough 23 doesn't look like it I did say it wasn't quite straightforward. Sure enough, he's not over the line yet, or is he? Oh, what a way to finish it. 24. And all of a sudden, Walden needs two snookers. Yeah, and he's not going to play for them. Joker. Joe Perry got in first, only made 38, which was disappointing, but bit by bit, he's gone on to win the frame. And we're going to a decider. It's Walden 2, Perry 2. Just underway on the other table, Mark Williams and Dave Gilbert. They're still in the relatively early stages of the first frame.
But over here, we're heading into the last. Beside in frame, Joe Perry to break. In the 13 completed matches so far in Group 5 of the Championship League, there's only been one decider, and it was won by Ricky Walden. Perry in first, but a bit straight on this black. And he's finished a long way short in attempting to come around the angles. Eight. And he was a bit unlucky, perhaps, to land straight on the black. Joe Perry, eight. I have played a few deciding frame finishes before in a PTC event back in 2011. Perry came through 4-3. At the Wushy Classic in 2012, an extraordinary match between them. Walden was 4-0 up. Perry came back to level at 4-all. Walden won the decider on the black. Went on to win the title. The last time they played a decider was here. Well, not here. It was in this event, but we were still at Crondon Park back then. Just two years ago. And uh, Ricky Walden came out on top that time. That had the look of a much better chance than the one he had at the start of the frame. Surprising miss, but he's not left anything on here, I don't think.
for a moment there. It looked like he'd had a bit of luck. The red going in with the help of a flick off the other red. And then it was all cancelled out by the in-off. Good shot from Perry, and now he's got a real chance to win frame and match. Ordinarily, you'd like his chances from here, but the way this match has gone, Eight. won't be taking anything for granted. Nine. He's certainly on a red. It's the left middle. Has one to the left corner as well, but quite a difficult cut. So the one to middle was the choice. He's played it well. Surely now he'll be disappointed if he doesn't finish off the match here. What's he done there? 24. A sigh of frustration, maybe even a sigh of disbelief from Perry. And even when that chance turned into a really good frame of match winning opportunity, it was hard to feel he was going to do it. It's just not been that sort of match. Mark Williams has won the opening frame on the other table against Dave Gilbert. struggling to make the most of his chances if Alden keeps giving them to him like this eventually Perry's going to get over the line
8. Nine. If he does, he'll wonder how on earth he's won this match. And that's not to take anything away from him. You can tell from his body language that he knows. He's played some poor stuff at times. of sounding like I'm just repeating myself over and over another chance passes by and surely this time Walden is going to make some inroads at least into that 51 point lead nice easy starter Eighteen. Not really a problem that the black is up the other end of the table. can sustain this with pinks. The other more obvious is issues are the 24. the red that's on the cushion and then the yellow on the ball cushion. So it would be some effort to win the frame from here. 25. One. 
32. Left himself a harder red than he would have hoped for, but he does have an angle here to bring out the other one if he so chooses. what he played to do but it hasn't worked out Ricky Walden, 38 and this is a real chance now for Perry to get over the line it's not straightforward but both of the Reds are over pockets did say that if Walden kept giving Perry let-offs and chances inevitably he will get there in the end Eight. Nine. Blue takes the lead to 27 with 27 left. And he's played a nice positional shot onto the yellow, and this is match ball. Still just one snooker needed, so could do with the green in as well. No, it's not over yet. So one snooker needed to tie. Should be that now. Indeed it is. So Joe Perry somehow, despite a fairly patchy...